Kelly Kutobo Toko, Kafala Tagurilla Topasa Mamela di Sandals, Bakora Gusirela Tasijana, Satopasa on the Pirate, May the hero of the day, Kemona Yolaka Blumfontein, Helen Lekawana Lela, Sipo Chaine. And the happy people are happy once again. And a big learning moment also from that MTN8 final is we now know it's chain and not chaine. All right, so Orlando Pirates have defended their MTN8 crown after beating league champions Mamelodi Sundowns in a penalty shootout out at the Moses Mabida Stadium. To talk to us about this, we've got the Pirates trio. We've got the coach of the moment, Jose Ribeiro, Oli Sanda, a man that literally put his body on the line and Captain Fantastic. Coach, but let me start with you. I think watching that final, there were moments in that game where the victory could have gone either way. But through it all, you're just always so calm and collected. How do you do it? Good morning. Thank you so much. How do I do it? Uh, well, uh, I'm there with the responsibility to help my players, uh, to help the team. So I try to be to be calm in order to understand what's going on and help them in the, in the best way. Uh, obviously, the feelings and the emotions still running, you know, inside. Uh, but I try to be focused, in, uh, in, especially in games like this, I think, uh, be calm and also express to the players that, you know, we are in control, that we are controlling the situation is important. And yeah, that's why we have time later to, to, to express ourselves also in a different way. And we have to say congratulations. As we came into the interview, I mentioned how a lot of people were saying it's Sipo Chaine and it's Sipo Chain. But also your name is another name that people normally get wrong. Yeah. For the benefit of our viewers at home, Coach, can you tell them how to pronounce your name? Jose. Jose. And your surname? Ribeiro. Ribeiro. So there is no V, it's Ribeiro, no? Not Ribeiro. Ri, not Rivero. No. All right, coach. Thank you so much for that. Tapela, let me come to you. Um, you're the captain of the team. You're the man that the team looks to for leadership. In that moment, after you take your penalty, which was a bit unfortunate, how do you still keep your head up? Because the whole team is looking at you. Captain, you need to keep the team going. You need to keep everyone motivated. And of course, at that moment, you also do have the benefit that Chain has saved a number of those penalties. Uh, first of all, good morning and good morning to the viewers. Uh, it's, it's always important, as the coach said, uh, to, to, to feel in control uh, of the moment. Um, penalties are part of the game. Uh, so the first thing that we have to remind each other is that the game is still on. Uh, even though it's finished, now it's, it's just another part of it when it comes to penalties and uh, we need people to be concentrated. Uh, and for us, luckily on the day, Sipo was what is, what is, was at his best. Um, so it, it kind of helped us also a bit to, to calm our nerves down. Unfortunately, I was, I was the one to disappoint the guys, but it happens and it's part of football. And uh, Karim did the job for us at the end uh, to finish it all for us. Oh, yeah, that was also a beautiful stun of a penalty there. Um, Olisa, let's bring you in because, of course, you came into the game as a substitute coming in for an injured CBC. Yeah. Firstly, just talk to us about how your week in preparation was um, from the Pirates camp preparing for this final. And when you came onto that field, it was just like you didn't, you didn't care. You were like, I get hurt, I don't get hurt. I'm just putting my body on the line for my team. Yeah, um, good morning to everyone. Um, I think um, we worked really hard to be here. Um, the guys put in a lot of effort, um, the coaches, the staff, everyone. And then we had uh, like a rough past few weeks coming into the game. So we knew that this was the chance to redeem ourselves. We knew how important the game was. And, and I think all the plans and preparation that we had during the week paid off. So me stepping into the field, I wasn't just playing for myself. I was playing for the fans. I was playing for the club, the coach, and my teammates. So I had to give everything. And congratulations to you for that. Coach, I'm going to come back to you because leading up to this final, and I think um, I, I spoke to you at the presser just before that Stellenbosch game, just in terms of the inconsistency of performance in terms of Pirates. You now have this trophy which you've lifted. I mean, you've been in South Africa since the 2022-23 season. Lifted three trophies, so congratulations on that. But when we move now back into the league campaign, 
um, what is it that you feel you probably need to do differently as a team to get back to how you were pre-season? Uh, we need to play. Uh, we did only play five games in the league. We have a particular schedule early this season. We did have, uh, in the end, the, the bad results were concentrated in two weeks. So it seems that everything suddenly is going wrong, but it happens in a very, very short space. Mm. Couple of uh, bad results, but we have a good August, we have a very bad September. Mm. And, you know, in, in August, it, it looks that we are, you know, the best team in the country, and suddenly in September, we, we couldn't manage to get good results, we couldn't manage to score goals, and everything suddenly looks, looks bad. But we were calm, we continue, uh, uh, trying to be in control one more time, trying to not not suddenly all of us start doubting and start to 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 put everything you know in a, in a bad space, and that's the strength of this team. Uh, when we speak about consistency, obviously in the league is the most important thing. We didn't have the opportunity to play so much, or at least like the the other the other contenders, but now we're going through. Uh, a, a new chapter in the season and, and I think the last result is going to be a very important boost for us. Mm. Um, Tapolo, bring us into the field in terms of what happened after you go into extra time and now you know you're going into a penalty shootout because as someone just watching from the sidelines you want to know who's taking the penalty, how are those decisions made in terms of who takes the penalties, what's the order of the penalties, is that something you guys discuss beforehand and then you say, oh no, the bus is none go out, he falls out of the list, who's coming in, what happens in terms of the penalty shootout and who's where? Uh, as I said before, penalties are part of the game, so the preparations are also considered because uh, when we play a cup game, we prepare for, for every scenario. Uh, so we take penalties during the week, uh, everyone in the team. Uh, we don't have a specific guy to say, no, these five are, these five are gonna be the ones who are kicking on the day, mm. but everyone must be prepared. Uh, so those decisions are based on that, which we have to give credit to the technical team as well, because they make sure that they prepare as well for those situations, uh, to know that, okay, if on the day it comes, this is the list, this is who going to come and take the first one. And we can decide if I'm not feeling comfortable, I can yeah. change with someone who is on the day. But uh, the preparations were done during the week. So when that time comes, there's no confusion and the confidence is there that we've done it in a week. So we just have to apply ourselves and do it uh, on the game. Take off your captain hat for me for a second. <laughs> How beautiful do you think it would have been if Reda Bukhila took that final penalty for, for the Buccaneers in this MT8 final? Uh, it would have been sweet. Uh, it would have been sweet for him. But uh, we we have to try and protect the young um, yeah. young man because Such a good uh, spirit, eh? uh, he's coming back from that disappointment. But he's over and done with now, and uh, we don't wanna put him in a situation where he gets to be exposed again and then get disappointed. But uh, the list was there when his time was gonna come. It, he was gonna take a penalty, mm. but uh, we had to follow procedure and, and follow and respect the list. So we, we, next time it comes, hopefully you will have you a put chance the young to, man up. <laughs> to Such to a feisty young man that one is. Um, Alisa, do you now think that you're just putting a lot of pressure on Coach Jose next to you? Because you come into the field, you have a stellar performance. Doesn't make your job any easier, Coach. But do you think that's what you're essentially doing, just putting pressure on coach to say, coach, I want to be more consistent in the starting 11 for you. Um, I, don't, I don't think um, we have um, a healthy competition in the team. Um, the guys have been doing really well, you know, when they're playing and um, I've been out for some time. So I've been able to like sit and watch. I've been supporting them, you know, and we are a team. You know, whoever is playing at that moment, we just have to support each other because we know our abilities and we know whoever is playing at that moment is going to deliver for us. Mm. So I don't think um, the coach also knows that whoever is playing at that moment is going to give his all for the team because we're not just playing for ourselves. Mm. So I think the coach knows us and he knows what we're able to do. So, yeah. <laughs> and, and maybe, coach, let me put you on the spot a little. Maybe you can help me out because... 
watching from home, I was a little bit confused um, in that first couple of minutes of the game when there was that incident with Romeo Kermit as well as Ronwin Williams. Do you know what happened there? Because I was a bit confused with, the, with that one. No, that indirect really. free kick. Are you on the same page as me, coach? Yeah, I am. I am. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, things happen during the games. I think uh, it was uh, just a free kick. Mm. Uh, it was not a regular situation from the goalkeeper to take the ball two times. And, uh, yeah, that's all. Nothing, nothing really special. Anything can happen on the day. And, and coach, let's just talk about what Olisa was touching on, the fact that as a team you don't play just for yourself. I think something that we've seen as spectators and people that watch football is we've seen the Pirates players come out and play for you, and particularly their coach. What is the kind of relationship that you have with the players? Because we literally see them coming out, putting themselves on the line, and it's more like we're doing this not only for ourselves and our supporters, but we're doing this for coach Jose. I don't, I don't see the situation like that. I mean, we, we are a team. I, I try to be only one more in the group. They know, they, they know very well my responsibility in the end of the week. I have to make some decisions that sometimes, you know, I, I, can, I, I cannot be fair. I cannot even pretend to be fair when you manage a group of uh, 35 players with the level of these players. It's just impossible. So. I, do, I just try to be honest, uh, I try to do my best in order to make sure that the team can win, but my relation with them is always from the same level. We, we try to be uh, as normal as possible, yeah. uh, we try to keep our respect, and the players are ready to, are always ready to, to play for the, for the badge, to play for the fans, to play for, for each other. We try to be a family, we have our difficult moments like every family as well when we use the term family uh, we have to use it with all the exceptions mm -hmm. not only with the positive ones but we try to solve our problems also within the group and that's why these guys manage to to find themselves three times in a row in a final to succeed in a final to be strong in games like last saturday where where you really have to there's, not, there's no possibilities to hide, mm. you know, things in, a games, in games like this. And they manage to, to stay together, to be strong, and, and finally to get the result that they really deserve. Oh, well, thank you so much, Coach. I think one thing we can all appreciate is the level of humility that we've got here in the studio between the coach as well as the two Orlando Pirates players. Gentlemen, congratulations. The happy people are happy again. Pals under pressure. You've got one more title to defend so far this season. Thank you. Thank, Thank you so much. Thank you. That is, of course, the champions of the MTN AIDS, Orlando Pirates, successfully defending the title back to back. And we were, of course, joined by Coach Jose Ribeiro as well as Tapeno Kloge and Oli Sanda. That's how we wrap up your sport news for today. We will, of course, do it all over again tomorrow. Do have yourselves a blessed day ahead. We take you through now to an ad break and then Sakina and Leanne bringing you headlines and all your favorites right here on Morning Live.